Happy New Year. You just heard the reading from the Gospel of Matthews, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. The sermonic theme for today is for the love of God. For the love of God. Five friends are in their senior year. Four of them go shopping and decide to steal their outfits for their senior class trip. The fifth friend suffers from Mother Teresa complex and is unable to steal. The other four girls get caught, and because of the church charges that come up against them, they are banned from attending their senior class trip. The fifth girl, who has done nothing wrong and is not banned from going on the trip, decides to support her friends by missing her senior class trip. While she did nothing wrong and she earned the right to go for her, the right thing to do was to stick with her friends. Sometimes we do things not because we need or should do things, but because of something larger than us, the group, the community, the people. We do things that will help others, though nothing requires us to do so. No one would expect us to do it. We don't have to do it, but we do it because of our faith and our convictions. We make leaps of faith because it is imperative to someone else's journey that we do so. Every second Sunday of the New Year month, we look at this text of Jesus getting baptized. But here's the thing. If we understand baptism to be connected to making mistakes and turning from God and our need to acknowledge and address those wrongs, then Jesus didn't need to get baptized. He was really a pretty healthy guy. Some would even venture to say he was perfect. He was on earth on assignment. He didn't need no baptism. So why does Jesus get baptized? Even John declined saying, if anyone needs to be baptized, you should be dunking me, not me, you. I would like to posit this morning for your consideration that Jesus did it for the love of God. Bible scholars said he did it because it was fitting and proper for him to do. It seems appropriate for Jesus to go through the motions of being baptized since every believer was getting baptized. Jesus was declaring, I am part of this community and as such I participate in this act of baptizing. Do it, John, for it is appropriate now. According to Matt Woodley, good Jews didn't need baptism. That was reserved for second-class citizens. Do it, says Jesus to John, because I participate with those who are unsure of their footing. Do it, John, baptize me now, to the degree that baptism was a rite of passage into this new community of believers, Jesus did it to belong. Baptism has significance beyond the actual act of going down in the water. In our expressions, you can often hear people say and discuss, for the love of Christ, Jesus, God. But really, we have so misused and appropriated the calling of God's name. In the squalor and stench of our misuse is a profundity waiting for our epiphany and an aha wake-up moment. God's name should always be attached to love, for it is God's essence. God's love is as good as any reason, even better for motive, mission, and movement. For the love of God, for the love of God, I need you, John, to baptize me. So the next time you hear someone belch out, for the love of, may you hear it differently. May you know how far God was willing to go for us. How much Jesus narrowed the distance from us to him by standing in the water like us. Jesus engages in that radical act of solidarity because it was fitting and proper and appropriate. John got caught up in who Jesus was, pomp and circumstance, his genealogy, his resume, his spoken word, his wisdom, his effect on people, his view of Jesus was larger than life. He got caught up on his media image, his press release. He got caught up in the local gossip. He got caught up in the salutation, the prefixes and the suffixes. But haven't you gotten caught up, looked up, 
Found yourself across town in a seat of thoughts? Have you sometimes lost your way, been unable to really see clearly because we magnify people, places, and things? John was there. Sometimes our eyes can focus on all that and lose focus on what really, really matters. John was all down for the cause, but then he got gripped for a moment. And Jesus tries to get him straight. For the love of God, John, baptize me. Hear me, hear me. Jesus didn't need to get baptized. Jesus went through the motions because it was the fitting and proper thing to do. He go down in the water. Translation, he was dipped repeatedly in the water. And he comes out of the river soaking wet. A mother is dying. The chemotherapy has left her emaciated. Her scalp can be seen with patches of hair all over her head. Her skin is pale purple. She is what some call the walking dead. Her daughter comes over with a bottle of nail polish. The mother declares to her daughter, I look like crap. The daughter says, you look beautiful to me, and begins to paint her nails. The mom knows that the daughter is lying, but she also needs the lie. She looks down at the beautiful paint on her nails as her daughter reaches in to kiss her on the cheek. In the ritual of baptism, our ancestors acted out the bizarre truth of the Christian identity. We are people who stand totally exposed before evil and declare them powerful against love, says Rachel Evans. For the love of God, we stand by our friends, not as an endorsement for wrong, but as a show of support. For the love of God, we show up again and again as an act of radical faith. For the love of God, we cling to this community of faith. For the love of God, some of us ponder how to live this deeply theological bond out in our daily lives. We will talk more after service today. For the love of God, Jesus gets submerged again and again. For the love of God, Jesus met people in different spaces and during different periods of their life. For the love of God, Jesus meets people at wells. For the love of God, Jesus meets people in their homes and on their lawns and in boats. For the love of God, wherever you find people, Jesus is there. And for the love of God, Jesus takes the good news wherever he goes. People don't have to come to him, but the good news goes to them. For the love of God, we unite, but we say the more the merrier, and we keep our doors and our heart open. For the love of God, we keep coming and hoping our walk and our talk are more in alignment each day. For the love of God, we extend our hands and our feet and our hearts to others. God's love is too good. It's simply too good not to share. For the love of God, we are here embracing 2023. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. And for the love of God, Jesus says, because I belong to this community and you belong to me, it is the right thing to do. Amen.